America's number one adventurer, K-7, former United States secret agent who operated in 22 countries, on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you another story of today. Here is K-7. Ladies and gentlemen, the illegal traffic in narcotics is one of the most horrible crimes against humanity. Recently, this traffic has increased due to war on another continent. It has even been charged that unscrupulous warlords have encouraged this terrible business. Whether or not this is true, it is a fact that certain international crooks have become narcotic peddlers. John Holbrook will introduce the story of how one of these criminals was captured. Thank you, K-7. Agent Z, one of K-7's former associates, was investigating traffic in narcotics. His findings led him to a city about 100 miles inland. He gathered information for several days and then sent for Patricia Norwood. Our story opens as Agent Z and Patricia enter his rooms in a hotel. This is a narcotic case, Pat. If we can break it, it may mean a good story for your newspaper. Narcotic? Yes. Well, Z, isn't this a bit unusual for you? Usually you work on things of a more international flavor. Well, this is an international case, Pat. It... Oh, sit down. I'll answer this call All and right. explain it. Hello? Be special agent Z. Who are you? Never mind who I am. You have 24 hours to get out of town. Never mind having this call traced. It won't do you any good. Hello? 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 What's the matter, Z? I've just been given 24 hours to get out of town, Pat. You mean they've threatened you? Yes. But I've received threats before. However, that call confirms my suspicions. I sent for you because I had an idea that I'd been spotted. The crooks know who I am, and they're watching me. Now, Pat, this is a big case. I'm convinced that at least one gang of international crooks has turned narcotic peddlers. So that's it. I'll sketch the case briefly. Because of war, the narcotic trade has increased. Cocaine is easy to get at its source. The only problem is landing it in other countries. And somehow it's being landed here. Would you know how? I have my suspicions. One thing I am fairly sure of is that this city is a distributing center, which brings me to your job. I'm ready, Z. Uh, tell me what you want me to do. Pat, you're going to become the athletic type. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean that you're going in for bowling. I'm sure that narcotics are being sold in a bowling alley. I've collected enough evidence to make an arrest. But first, I want to find out where the stuff comes from. How they get it. And that's my job. That's it, Pat. And it isn't going to be easy. Now, the place caters to both men and women. I want you to go there and learn how to bowl. Do anything but keep your eyes open. Well, where will I get in touch with you? Right here. Telephone me. Our old friend K-7 is checking the seacoast, trying to locate the ship that smuggles it in. I'm going to stick close to the hotel until I hear from him or you. Now you'd better leave. Go out the back way so that you won't be seen. Forty-eight hours passed before Z heard from either K-7 or Pat. Then he received two telephone calls. The first was a long-distance call. This is K-7 speaking. We have located the narcotic ship. It is anchored just outside the 12-mile limit. The narcotics are transferred to land by an amphibian plane. That is all for now. I'll call you later. I'll be here, K-7. Goodbye. By amphibian plane. It ought not to be hard to find where it lands. I think that as soon as I've heard from Pat, I'll go fishing. Hello? Z? Yes, Pat? I've discovered something, Z. Narcotics are brought in here in bowling balls. What's that? Are you sure? Positive. I picked up one of the balls. They're light, hollowed out inside. The balls are shipped in and carried out by men who apparently come here to... Hey, Pat! Pat, what happened? Hello? Hello? Pat, where are you? Where are you phoning from? Pat! Pat, can you hear me? Pat! Eight minutes later, Z arrived at the bowling alley, but Pat had disappeared. Z spent the next few hours combing the city for information. Then he bought a fishing rod. In the meantime, Pat had been taken to a small factory located on a lake nearly 20 miles out of town. There she faced her captor. Bring her in here. All right. Close the door. Yeah, make yourself at home, Miss Norwood. Yes. 
Perhaps you'd be more comfortable if I removed the gag from your mouth. Yeah, there we are. Oh, I'm not afraid of your screaming here. The sounds from my little sawmill will prevent anyone hearing you. Who are you? Why did you bring me here? Why? Oh, because of your great interest in bowling balls. I thought perhaps you might be interested in how they are made. What are you going to do with me? Do with you? Well, perhaps you would like a sea voyage. That would be nice. Come, look out the window. Well, Tonight a plane will land on my little lake. When it has unloaded, I may decide to send you back with it. You uh, like the sea air? You'll never get away with it. Well, I think so, Miss Norwood. It'd be very comfortable at sea. You see, my boat is 12 miles out and no one comes near it. You will stay there until your friend Z decides to stop prying into other people's business. If you think Z will drop the case, you're wrong. Well, that would be very unfortunate for you, Miss Norwood. Your friend Agent Z may change his mind when he finds that he is dealing with Adolf Munbalin. We have met before. He sent me to prison once. But this time it's going to be different. As night settled over the lake, Pat watched the sun go down from the barred window of Manbolan's office. She was alone, and she hoped that someone would pass near enough so she could call. But save for the rowboat of a lone fisherman far out on the lake, she saw no one. Several hours passed. The fisherman moved his rowboat nearer to shore, but it was too dark for Pat to see. Then from the distance came the hum of an airplane motor. Yes, and he's going to land. He's circling to come into the wind. And he's coming down to my right. Now, if I can get to him before someone comes out from shore. your motors. I'm coming alongside. Shut off your motors. Who are you? They sent me out to pick you up. Wait. the motorboat. It's broken down tonight. Watch out. I'm coming alongside. Man Bolin's a fool to send a rowboat out to pick this stuff up. Who'd you say was a fool? Man Bolin. Here, give me your hand. You're beginning to plane and help me. Oh, I can make it. Give me a hand, I say. All right. Come on. Yep. Yep. Say, who are you anyway? I've never seen you around before. No. I was sent out from the bowling alley today. Is this cocaine in these bags? Of course it is. What did you expect to find? Rock salt? Yeah, start getting them into your boat. Wait a minute. What's that sound? I thought you said the motorboat wasn't running. Well, evidently it is. Put up your hands. What are you doing? Who are you? Never mind talking. Turn around and put your hands behind you. Don't push your gun in my ribs. I haven't time to talk. Hold your hands so I can put these handcuffs on. Yeah, all right. And just in case you might start talking when that motorboat comes alongside, I'll put this gag in your You'll boat. die by law. You'll get plenty of time to talk later. I'll take your helmet and goggles. I'll get in the back of the plane. Great. Are you there? They're coming alongside. I decided to come out myself tonight, Dupree. You know, it would be easier if we could use lights. Yes. Well, I brought you a passenger. A very charming passenger. Climb aboard, Miss Norwood. You are about to start your vacation. Say, why don't you take off your goggles, Dupree, and look at her? 
Miss Norwood, may I present your pilot, Mr. Dupree. I'm very glad to see you, Miss Norwood. Oh. Say, what's the matter with your voice, Dupree? Not a thing, man, Bowen. My voice is quite normal. Wait, I'll snap on the lights. Perhaps you can see me better. You! Me! How did you do Keep it? Keep your hands over your head, man, Bowen. Pat, yes. take the other revolver out of my side coat pocket. I've got it, Steve. Good. The pilot's in the back of the plane. Watch him. Man, Bowen, you're under arrest for smuggling narcotics. I'll get you someday, Z. <laughs> Everything all right, Pat? Yes. Z, how did you find out where they'd taken me? I didn't, Pat. But by checking the trucking companies, I found out where the bowling balls were shipped from. And K-7 found that narcotics were landed by airplane. The factory on the lake was the answer. Are you all right? Oh, yes, of course I am. Nan Bowen was going to send me out to sea until you dropped the case. I heard him mention your vacation. But I think he's the one who'll go away for a long time. Van Bolen was a vicious international crook. His career is now ended. Narcotics, like war, inflicts untold suffering on humanity. Its victims, young and old, crumble, decay, or go mad as a result of this deadly habit. These criminal narcotic peddlers should be driven from the face of the earth. Listen for my next story. This is K-7 speaking. Thank you.